Namaskar. Today we'll start with a new chapter. We'll learn new concepts. Electrostatic potential energy, electrostatic potential. We'll also learn about capacitance. In school or say standard 11th, you learned about gravitational force, spring force. Both these forces are conservative forces. Even electrostatic force is a conservative force. Now gravitational force is between two masses and it is proportional to the product of the, these two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between these two masses. Also electrostatic force is proportional to the product of two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Right? So both these uh, are similar but their constants are different. If I lift a body from say the table to a position then I have to do work against the gravitational force. And this work done is stored in the body as potential energy. The moment I release this, gravitational force takes over, right? And the potential energy is changed to kinetic energy. Suppose I consider a spring. If I want to compress it, I have to apply a external force. Right? This external force does the work and this work done is stored in the body as potential energy. The moment I release that external force, the spring force takes over. Right? Same is the case with electrostatic force. So, we can find electrostatic force between two charges by using Coulomb's law. Right? We have learned this. Now, if I have to bring two charges together, that means at a some distance, then I have to apply some external force. The moment that external force is removed, electrostatic force will take over. So, let us start this chapter. This chapter is about electrostatic potential and capacitance, which we'll be talking about a little later. So, let us consider a charge Q say positive charge. Of course, I can consider a negative charge also, but let us consider a positive charge. It might be the charge configuration, right? So it has a field around this charge. Now say, for example, I want to bring a positive test charge, say plus Q, from a point R to point P. So that force let me say it is an external force which is applied. That external force has to do work in bringing it from point R to point P. So that work done will be stored in the charge as potential energy. So if I have, this is the charge plus Q which is on the way, it will be brought from uh, point R to point P. The external force will be in this direction. F external. I have denoted it as F external. And electrostatic force will be in this direction. I have denoted it with Fe. Now external force is opposite to that of electrostatic force. Right? So this, I can say this F external is negative of Fe. So, work done by external force will be negative of the work done by Fe. So, work done by an external force in moving a charge, say plus Q, from R to point P is given by integral of F external dot dr. And the limits are from R to P. I denote this work done as WRP from R to P. 
Now, this I can write as minus of electrostatic force. So, this will be equal to minus of integral of Fe dot dr. This work done is against the electrostatic repulsive force and gets stored as potential energy. Potential energy at P, let me denote it by U, P. And potential energy uh, at R, let me denote it by U, R. So, potential energy difference, how will I find it? It will be, that will be potential energy del and difference delta U will be equal to U, P minus U, R. And that will be the work done in bringing that plus Q charge, it's a test charge, from point R to point P. So, we understand that the difference of potential energy, that is important. Potential, what is the potential energy at R or what is the potential energy at P is not, does not matter, right? Difference is important. Also, you find that that F external is so much just to oppose this Fe. That means F external is equal and opposite to Fe. Hence, every, there is no net force acting on this charge while it, when it is moving from R to P. That means we are bringing the charge from point R to point P without acceleration. Right? So, therefore, we can define electric potential energy difference between two points as the work needed to be done by an external force in moving charge Q from one point to another for electric field of any arbitrary charge configuration. Now, since I said it is the potential energy difference which is important, let me give an example. When we want to measure a distance, say from this point to this point, right? So, what do I do? I take a ruler and I can put a reference of that ruler, all right, say 0 at this position. And so, I am choosing the 0 at this or reference point or origin at this point. And then I measure the distance here, right? So, at this position, my say the distance is 20 centimeter, right? Now, I can do the same thing. So, what is the difference? What is the distance? That is 20 centimeters. 20.0 minus 0. That will give you 20 centimeters, right? This is the distance. Now, I can also do, I can take my 0 I can choose my reference point or zero or the origin to be this point. Hence, I can measure, I can measure the distance. I want to measure this distance now. So, what will be this distance? Say, it will be 30 centimeters here. And what will be this then? It will be, it will be 50 centimeters, right? Say. So, therefore, what will be the distance between these two points? It will be 50 centimeters minus 30 centimeters. So, that will again give you 20 centimeters, right? So, it is the distance which is important here. So, that means I have a freedom to choose my zero. That means reference, right? So, depending upon that, the value here will differ. But the distance will remain the same. That means difference here is remaining the same. So when we find electrostatic potential energy at a point, we are free to choose our origin. Hence, say for example, if I add some arbitrary number here and here, it doesn't make any difference, right? So, it is finally the difference will be UP minus UR. That means we can choose a point from where we bring the charge. The point where the potential energy is zero can be chosen. We choose the point 
at infinity as the point where electrostatic potential is zero. So it is as good as I'm taking the point R to infinity. Hence, external force has to do work in bringing the charge from infinity to the point P. So therefore, work done will be UP minus U infinity. And we have chosen this as zero. So therefore, it is equal to UP, potential electrostatic potential energy at point P. So potential energy of charge Q at a point in the presence of a field due to any charge configuration is the work done by the external force in bringing the charge Q from infinity to that point. Now let us understand electrostatic potential. So, what a, how much work will have to do in bringing a unit test charge okay, from infinity to that point is a characteristic of the electric field associated with the charge configuration. Right? So, work done, if I want to find work done by that external force in bringing a unit positive charge from a point R to P, then it will be equal to the energy difference, potential energy difference between the two points divided by the amount of test charge where Vp and Vr are the electrostatic potentials at P and R respectively. So again, we choose the potential to be zero at infinity. So we can say work done by an external force in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to that point will be equal to the electrostatic potential at that point. So how do we define electrostatic potential at a point? Right? The electrostatic potential we denote it by V at any point in a region with electrostatic field is the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to that point, of course, without accelerating the charge. Now, let us obtain an expression for potential due to a point charge. So, let us consider a point charge, say Q, at the origin, okay, so that I can measure any distance or any position vector can be given directly from Q. So, let us consider Q to be positive and let us consider a point P with position vector R from the origin. So, let me consider this point, say P, okay, and it is the position vector of this point is R. Now, let, let us bring a unit positive charge from infinity to this point P. So, I have to do work. That means that external force which is applied will have to do work. So, from infinity, the charge is brought to point P. So, say at P dash. What will be the position vector at P dash? It will be R dash. Say. So, distance is R dash and the position vector is R dash. So, at point P dash, on the path, the electrostatic force on a unit positive charge will be given by how much? 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0. This capital Q into that small test charge Q, right? But how much is the test charge? Unit positive charge we have said. So, it is magnitude is unity. So, therefore, the force will be Q into 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 R dash the whole square into unit vector R dash where R dash is the unit vector along OP dash. Right? So, if let me say it is brought from P dash 
and it moves a distance say dr dash right it is against the electrostatic force electrostatic force is in this direction so this distance moved is in this direction r dash is in this direction right so work done in moving the charge through a distance dr dash against this electrostatic force is given by delta w is equal to minus q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r dash square into dr dash right the total work done by the external force will be given by w will be equal to integral of now minus q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r dash square dr dash what are the limits from infinity to the point r so now this is constant so i have taken out so integral of 1 upon r dash square dr dash infinity to r now integral of 1 upon r dash square is minus 1 upon r r dash right so what we get w is equal to q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r dash the minus and minus becomes plus here and the limits are from infinity to the point r so what will be the value here if i substitute this values then what i get final answer as q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r so this is the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to the point so electrostatic potential at a point will be this much right so thus the potential at that point p due to the field which is produced by the charge this q is given by q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r we denote this the potential as v and r it is a function of r it depends on r so how does it vary 1 upon r so if i say if i plot okay either e say e or v if i plot it against r you've seen electric field dependence is 1 upon r square and potential dependence is 1 upon r so what i'll get is something like this right this is v and how will e vary it will be going like this right something silly similar when it we're talking about dependence on r right so this is e that's all in this session see you next time